Welcome into the Best in Paranormal Podcasting. This is Darkness Radio. I'm Tim Dennis. Folks, we've got a very interesting, very good show in store for you today. A different topic, a topic I love addressing, and that is the area of dreams. We're going to get into your dreams today and figure out how we can treat ourselves through dreams. Our guest today, Linda Yale Schiller, who's a psychotherapist, consultant, supervisor, and trainer in Watertown, uh, Massachusetts. We're going to talk a little bit about how we can get into PTSD and treating PTSD through your dreams, trauma, and whatnot. And uh, we're going to figure out how to do other things through your dreams as well throughout the program. And she's got a couple of really interesting books we're going to talk about. I, I need to address a couple of things first before we uh, get to that. And we'll tell you a little bit about Linda in a moment. But first, uh, folks, I told you uh, yesterday when we were on Supernatural News with Bruiser uh, that we've got a new sponsor on the program that will be coming on board next week officially. Uh, just want to update you a little bit about uh, the fact that uh, uh, Lumi Labs uh, is a new sponsor on our program. They sent us some gummies, some uh, CBD hemp gummies uh, that have just a tiny bit of THC in them. They're called microdose. And I tried my first one last night. Uh, as you guys know, I'm a chronic pain patient. I've got a few broken vertebrae and I've got some bulging and herniated discs as well, all over my neck and back, um, as well as some other pain issues and charcoal foot on top of that. Uh, we've gone through the laundry list before. We don't need to keep going through it again. But uh, yeah, so I tried my first one last night and believe it or not, took away uh, quite a bit of pain. I, I had a pleasant experience with it. The great thing about it is, is it doesn't give you a high, which is wonderful. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the pain relief without the high, which is exactly what I got. And uh, I had a great night of sleep, which I'm, I'm proud to announce. It was exactly what I was looking for. And I want to tell you more about uh, Lumi, but we'll get into that next week. That's what we'll do with that. Uh, just a reminder that the uh, microdose uh, gummies are an organic gummy infused with real fruit. It's vegan friendly. It's gluten free. It's made with lots of love, of course, which we love about that. They're also not your typical CBD hemp gummy. Fundamentally, that's what makes the gummies unique is that they contain a little bit more THC than other hemp gummies, but less than the maximum allowed by federal law, which is less than 0.3% THC, which is derived from industrial hemp. That makes it safe, reliable, and accurate doses of THC, which makes it legal throughout the entire U.S., which is huge. That means you can ship it to all 50 states. So that comes from Lumi Labs. We'll tell you how to get them next week. So that's what we'll do there. One other thing, I know uh, on social media, I sent out a prayer and healing request for our friend Jan Goldberg, who's a huge paranormal investigator, a good friend of the show. Unfortunately, Jan uh, lost her battle. She succumbed to cancer this past week, and we're saddened here at Darkness Radio to report that our friend Jan has passed away. So we thank you very much for sending out your, your prayers, uh, your thoughts, your, your uh, good vibes to, to Jan to try and get through her battle with cancer. We ask that you take those prayers, those those thoughts, that that, that healing that you're sending out for Jan, turn that, that good feeling uh, towards her family now. Uh, send it out to her, her brothers and her sisters, her family, her parents, and especially her husband and her son. They need your thoughts and your prayers more than ever right now. Please do that for us here at Darkness Radio, for her family more importantly. Jan's family really do, they do need that because she was such a light in their life and they really do need your thoughts and prayers right now to get through this difficult time. We appreciate that and do it for us, uh, your buddies here at Darkness Radio. Let's get into our program, shall we? Uh, we've got an exciting one today. Linda Yale Schiller is our guest. She's uh, a, an MSW and LICSW, we'll find out what those titles mean, uh, psychotherapist, consultant, uh, supervisor, and trainer in Watertown, Massachusetts, by integrating traditional therapeutic styles and techniques with expressive energy psychology and body-based modalities, Linda is able to provide support for healing at all levels of the self, mind, body, heart, and spirit. Her philosophy of treatment incorporates both deep healing at the source and practical coaching for daily life issues and dilemmas. 
Linda works from a psycho-spiritual and body-mind orientation. Potential clients can expect an individualized approach to their needs and to be met with warmth, respect, and a wide range of therapeutic options available to best help them reach their treatment goals. Uh, Linda also works deeply with dream work and offers a group dream circle, individual consultation and training for professionals on working with dreams. She's designed several innovative methods for dream work, and we'll talk about those methods today on the show. She's got a couple of different books we'll talk about as well on the program. One of them, which is intriguing, we'll start off with is PTSD Dreams, Transform Your Nightmares from Trauma Through uh, Healing Work. There's a second book, and we'll get into it later in the program, Modern Dream Work, New Tools for Decoding Your Soul's Wisdom. Uh, let's welcome to the program, Linda Yale Schiller. Linda, welcome to Darkness Radio. Thank you, Tim. Nice to be here. Good uh, good to have you, Linda. Uh, I want to start out a uh, little slow and ask you, mainly as a psychotherapist, how you got into the modality of dream work and working through dream work. I noticed th- through not only listening to you on, on your appearance on Coast to Coast AM, which is a great program to hear you through, but, but kind of looking at, looking at you online and, and kind of reading up a little bit on you, that you take a, a Jungian approach through your, through your work. How was it that you decided to go through dream work and what drew you to dream work? So it's a great question. So it, there's several sort of layers of answer which correspond to doing dream work because there are many layers of working with a dream. Mm-hmm. So from an early age in my life, I was always attracted to the spiritual side of things and investigated and explored a variety of spiritual practices and traditions throughout my childhood and my adolescence and my adult life. And um, had always uh, off and on paid attention to my dreams, but not in a very serious way. Um, After I uh, came, I lived in Israel for five years and had a very powerful connection with with the land while I was there and um, experienced both when I was in other parts of the world and and there, uh, what's called a waking dream experience where you're awake, but you're having a sense of whether it's deja vu or synchronicity or that sort of tingle of recognition of, oh, this is more than just what it seems. Mm -hmm. So I started connecting with sort of of archetypes and symbols in waking life as well as attending to dreams. And then in my studies, MSW is a a social work degree. You would have wondered what those letters were. And LITSW is simply the licensure, the licensing um, at a professional level. Uh And I came back, uh, I'm from Buffalo, New York originally. Mm -hmm. And then when I came back to the States, Um, I moved to Boston, where I live now. And in addition to my professional work, I've been a dancer for many years, and I have a dance community. This is relevant because a friend of mine from my dance community moved from New York to Boston, and she said, I'm so done with New York. It's way too much city for me. (laughs) I don't miss anything really about the city except my dream circle. And she said, I want to start a dream circle here in Boston. And she says to me, will you join me? And I said, yes. And then my next question was, what's a dream circle? <laughs> so my my highest self, if you will, or my gut intuition said, told me to say yes, even before I knew exactly what it was. And that's kind of how it started. And then um, I've been working with this group of women. There you know, have been four of us now. We've been together for, gosh, 35 years, um, not exactly the same people, because some people have kind of come and gone, but, you know, this core group now has been together for at least 30 years. Oh, wow. Um, and that's how it started. So then I, I read and I studied and I learned and I um, practice it in my, in my psychotherapy practice with my clients because I have a deep appreciation for both the conscious and the unconscious mind. So I know there's, there's more going on under the surface, whether we're talking about psychotherapy or we're talking about what where the dreams come from. And so I've always been attracted to the Jungian style because he pays a lot of attention to this spiritual element mm-hmm. um, of dream work. But I use a lot of different varieties uh, and methods of working with dreams. I'm not like a one size fits all. So I incorporate 
body oriented ex- embodied dream work and and focusing and constellation work and a whole lot of different ways of working with my dreams as well as putting together um, some methods of my own. That's that's great. Let me go back to the experience in Israel if I can. Um, so you go there, you have this uh, feeling of familiarity. I mean, mm-hmm. to, to put it a little mildly, well, I'll, mm-hmm. I'll kind of dumb it down a little bit. Um, do you experience now some psychotherapists will use hypnosis to go back and do past dream, mm-hmm. or past life uh, work. Mm-hmm. Do you believe you can access uh, access uh, past lives through dream work? And have you accessed a past life in Israel through dream work? So it's an interesting question. Um, I do believe that our soul doesn't, it's not just one and done, right? That we don't come into this body and that's it. When this body dies, the soul is gone. So my personal belief system is that the soul is eternal so that we come back around Mm -hmm. in different incarnations, um, sometimes in the same family system Mm -hmm. and sometimes in different ones. So then there's reincarnation or holding the energy from our ancestors and then there's past life experiences that may not be in our direct lineage okay so the question of have i ever had a past life experience or through dreams i have but not necessarily well in israel but also other places as well and the first one i had was i think this was a as a teenager um in new york state the native american indian tribe are the iroquois Okay. And I read a lot about Native American life and culture and traditions. And I was sure, and I still don't doubt it, that um, at one point, I that was my first experience of, of my memory in a past life. And when I was younger and I had longer hair, I used to make myself two braids and, and sort of put them and, and, and see myself because I'm blonde. So I wouldn't be mm-hmm. native American, but I would imagine what it would look like if they were black and I was a native American um, person. And, and I think mm-hmm. that was my first experience with kind of feeling that sort of sense of connection um, with a past life. And then there've been a variety of other things, both when I was in Greece, because that Greece is very, very ancient. And I remember once, you know, we were climbing a hill and then I looked down and I had that sense of, like the land was shimmering and I looked down and it's like, I've been here before. Yeah. I didn't know when or where or how, but I, I knew it like in my bones. Um, and that type of experience happened in Israel as well. Um, and in other places in, in the world. So after having those flashes or images, mm-hmm. has it ever come back to you in a dream? Have you ever had a dream that's felt so real that you know that those are flashes from that life? Yes. The short answer is yes. Okay, sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But nothing you want to share. Well, the one thing that I can share that is sort of relevant is I had a dream, I don't know how many years ago now, mm-hmm. where, well, I've had several dreams that were clearly set in in the, in the land of, of Israel in ancient times. And in one dream, there, there are two I remember. One is, I, I'm remembering, as you ask, that I saw an image of um, a, a low tent, and I'm part of a procession of a line of women wearing sort of jalabias and, and, and you know covered garments walking toward this tent, and I can hear in the tent is um, drumming and other music. And we're walking to the tent to participate in some kind of a ceremony in the desert. And that was mm. a dream I had. And it was so visceral, and it, the sense was this is a memory dream, not a dream that's symbolic of of, of something per se. So that was one dream that I had. And then another dream that I had was, again, set in a desert mountain area. And I, this is interesting, I'm climbing a mountain again because high places often feature in a variety of spiritual traditions in one way, shape, or form. So in this dream, I'm climbing a mountain and somehow in the side of the mountain, there's this blue stone and I pull it out of the mountain and it's really large. It's the size of a surfboard, but it's this shimmering, gorgeous blue stone. And then I'm on the stone and I kind of surf down the mountain and across the desert, like I'm surfing on a sea. 
Hmm. And it was somewhere between flying and surfing or water skiing. Um, But again, there was this visceral sense of something about this shimmering blue stone and being in the desert um, felt familiar. And then that one I actually pursued um, in my waking life. Um, And there's a story that may or may not be relevant for today about actually finding the stone at some point really that symbolized the yeah the dream that i had yeah so you were able to validate it in real life well i felt called that this stone was important to me that it had some kind of a special meaning or message for me sure. and so for a while i was kind of on the lookout for where am i gonna how am i going to connect with this stone okay and i even went online and i ordered a necklace once and it's like it was a beautiful necklace when it came but it wasn't my stone i knew it mm-hmm. so i had lived in israel for five years i came back and about 20 to 25 years after i had returned to america my family and i went back to israel for a visit and while i was there we were we were shopping in the old city in jerusalem mm-hmm. in the in the marketplace and i found my stone. I found a beautiful necklace with this um, gorgeous uh, turquoise blue stone in it called an Elat stone. And I knew that was it. And I've had it ever since. And it just feels like a special dream stone for me that connects me with a variety of different types of spiritual and psychic um, heritage. Huh. Interesting. Wow. That's, that's a very cool story. That's Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, interesting, very interesting indeed. Uh, so, uh, I just as you're sitting here talking about this, I think of, uh, I think we all have something like that where we've we've had a dream, especially when you talk about the braids. I think we all have something where we connect like that. Where mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. to me, as you were talking about that, I think of a, 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 just for myself. I can only relate to myself. Um, sure. High school archery class. You know, when, when you're in gym and I, I, I remember standing there as I'm firing off arrows and thinking of, uh, I don't know why, but it pops in my head, uh, thinking of a time, like in uh, like a Sherwood forest type area mm-hmm. and thinking of like, uh, like a medieval wearing medieval hoods and firing off arrows and thinking, I'm probably thinking of one too many Robin hood scenarios and probably just, you know, romancing over Robin hood movies um, but it felt a little too real. Well, you know, this takes us back the story that you're sharing to the, the realm of dream, because there's a different resonance when we're having a dream or a waking spirit experience that is part of our daily life. Cause a lot of dreams will come to give, give us information about What's going on in our life today? I mean, that's the first layer, if you will, of dream work. How is this dream connected to what I'm experiencing today? A a dilemma or a struggle or simply or something fun or something exciting. Mm -hmm. And then we can trace the dream work through symbols and metaphors. But then there are times when we have the sense of the numinous right? Mm -hmm. Of this is bigger than just us. And that comes when we in dream life when we, for example, um, have a departed relative show up. Okay. Sometimes that could be a metaphor for something. Oh, I dreamed about this woman who reminds me of my mother because of X, Y, and Z that's going on with my mother. Or it can be a visit from the departed relative. I was just going to ask visit, you that. Yeah, okay, go ahead. It feels different, mm-hmm. right? It feels different in our body. We have that tingle, that that larger than life experience and that can happen in waking life too so i would not rule out that if you had the sense of this is more real than real when you were you know shooting your arrows in gym class it could have been why that you were connecting with an experience that you had actually had in some form of life we don't know for sure how consciousness and embodiment work so we can't rule it out I think <laughs> let's tackle that point you just brought up there, Linda. Um, the point of how do we tell the difference between a dream visitation from a relative and what could be just potentially that relative showing up in a dream? Um, I get this question a lot from listeners, 
And I'll get emails from listeners saying, you know what? I think I saw grandma in a dream, but I'm not mm-hmm. quite sure. Like it was, I, I might have felt her over mm-hmm. here or I heard her voice, but it wasn't mm-hmm. quite her. As opposed to full on, they're standing in front of me and they're giving me messages. So they're standing mm-hmm. in front of me and, you know, it's, it's a, it, it feels so real. I could touch, I could touch her hand and, and I felt her energy and I could smell her perfume and, and, you know, I touched her hair. Uh, mm-hmm. What is the difference between, I had a real honest to God dream visitation with my loved one mm-hmm. and it was just, you know, I really missed that person and mm-hmm. they showed up in a dream. Well, I think Tim, you just did a fantastic job in describing exactly what the difference is. Really? Yes. When it is that vivid and visceral and you have what's called a a felt sense of experiencing the person, their energy, their, their touch, their hair, you see the look in their eyes and often Well, there's two people can come back to visit either because you have a strong love connection with that person or because there's unfinished business that the two of you need to work out. Mm -hmm. But in the sense you're describing with the grandmother, the sense of that strong love connection was so visceral and so vivid. And so you could practically taste, you know, her, her presence there. That is one of that's the sign of this was more of a visit than a dream image that came as part of a story um, which has symbolism and metaphor and meaning, but is different than the spirit or soul of the loved one coming to have an encounter with it. So I think you did a great job in in describing the difference. (laughs) Thank you. I I rarely get compliments. I'll take that as a compliment. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I, you know, that's a, Probably a good lead into to the the first book that I want to talk about with you here today, Linda, and that is PTS Dreams: Transform Your Nightmares from Trauma Through Healing Dream Work. Uh, a lot of people would consider the passing of a loved one trauma, or or even a, a trauma that that is hard for us to get through, especially when it's someone close. Um. And trying to work our way back through that, people will do whatever it takes to try and get through that. And a lot of times that's a lifelong trauma. We don't necessarily heal completely through that. We can lessen the pain from that loss, but we never truly get through that. Um, Is there a way through dream work that we can lessen that pain? It's a really good question. So I want to first differentiate between grief and trauma. Sure, please do. Because the loss of a loved one is is a part of everyone's life. It, it's mm-hmm. a part of the human experience. And I think in our Western world, we don't do a terrifically good job in recognizing the stages of grief or the process of grief. And it becomes um, pathologized instead of normalized. And I think other cultures do a much better job keeping their loved ones around. I'm thinking in um, in Mexico, for example, with Day of the Dead. Mm-hmm. I mean, every year on the anniversary, Day of the Dead, people go to the graves of the ancestors and they bring them gifts and they have a picnic and they talk to grandma and to their mom. And it's just what they do, right? Mm-hmm. In China, Um, You know, the ancestors are revered and there are altars and there are conversations with the ancestors and they're part of daily life. They're consulted. Mm -hmm. If someone was doing those things in our Western culture, you know, they might get a diagnosis instead of our, um, you know, support. True. So first, what I want to suggest is that grief and loss are part of our life. And when we lose a loved one, we don't ever get over it. Right. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that that's a bad thing necessarily. We don't want to live with pain and suffering, of course, Mm -hmm. but to have a sense of missing that person and feeling the love connection, even if we're sad, that's not trauma in my book, right? Okay. Trauma is something we're struggling with, we're suffering with. It was a negative experience where we felt out of control, where we or someone else was harmed or injured physically, emotionally, spiritually, all of the above. And that's trauma. 
right? And not everyone who goes through trauma develops PTSD, right? Right. Because PTSD is post-traumatic stress disorder. So we can have reactions and feelings following traumatic events in our life and then move on and heal without developing PTSD, right? Mm -hmm. So ideally, that's when our psyche is doing the healing work, including our dream life, that we need to do and we get the support we need and the belief we need when, and, and the connection we need, then we get past the traumas and our life isn't defined by it anymore. So when people said to me, how do I know, right, if I'm healing from my PTSD or not, or if I'm healing from these traumatic events or not, is what I tell them is that when it's just a memory, you remember it, but you, you're not affected by it. You're not having anxiety attacks. You're not feeling depressed. You're able to live your life and you remember it happened, but there are no negative emotions connected with that memory anymore. That's the hallmark, basically, of healing from PTSD or from trauma. From Trump, correct. Yeah. Uh, what do you say to someone who can't separate the difference between grief, depression, and trauma? Because I have work to do. Okay. <laughs> because I, if, for, let's bring it back to the dream work for a minute. Sure. So if you're dreaming of a departed relative and the feeling in the dream is warm, loving, connected, you may still wake from that visit or dream feeling a sense of loss or sadness, but you're also going to feel some kind of a delight or a connection or this sort of warmth of having, you know, had another chance to connect with your loved one. If the visit or the dream leaves you feeling fearful, anxious, worried, depressed, that's a symbol or a sign rather that there's unfinished business. There's something that you haven't yet worked out with this departed person. And, and you have an opportunity to do that mm -hmm. with dream work that you might not have had in life. Cause you can go back inside the dream. And, and I, I have one way of working with dreams that I talk about in the new book, which is it's now available for pre-order, but it'll actually come out to be published on September 8th that you go back inside the dream once you have done the work to make yourself safe. It's called the Gaia method, which stands for guided active imagination approach. And this is based on both Jungian active imagination and on best practice trauma treatment, okay. where we start from a place of safety. So part one is all about creating safe space outside the dream. Mm -hmm. And there's a bridge where we look for resources and safety that we might not have recognized in the dream. And once we're sure we have enough resources, we then can go back into the dream, dialogue with the characters, re-dream the dream, um, bring resources in that you or the other characters in the dream needed so that you have a different outcome. And what I tell people that I work with in dreams is that where you woke up is not necessarily where the dream ended. It's just where you woke up. So you can continue to dream the dream forward in your waking life after you've awakened. And that's part of the work of healing from if you do have PTSD or, as you said, you can't tell the difference between grief, depression, and loss. It's interesting, and I'll tell you what, we'll uh, we'll take our break here because we're really starting to get into the deep water, and and I, I have I I do want to take you a little deeper here, Linda, um, I, I because I do have a couple of friends who, uh, and, and I'm just going to deal from their experiences when I mm -hmm. when I when I ask you these questions. Sure. Um, and one who in particular I asked that question from the, the difference between grief, depression and trauma. And if you can't see yourself forward from that. Um, and I'm talking mired in all three. Um, mm. Mm. I mean, can't see the forest for the trees, yeah. it, that type of that type of deal. Uh, and it's, it's real hard to try and give somebody a pep talk when they don't want the pep talk. You know, and, and I don't know what you do for that person. And, and I'll tell you what, when we come back, I want to ask you that question. What do you do mm -hmm. for somebody who you can't give them that pep talk or you can't get them to a place 
where they want to get past that. And, and we'll, we'll tackle that when we get back. Our, our guest is Linda Yale Schiller. And the the two books we have, uh, we have descriptions, actually a link in the description of this program. And, and uh, you can also get them on Amazon.com. Uh, PTS Dreams, Transform Your Nightmares from Trauma Through Healing Dream Work. The other book is Modern Dream Work, New Tools for Decoding Your Soul's Wisdom. When we come back, we'll ask Linda that question. Uh, what do you do when you can't get to that first step, when you can't get through grief, trauma, and depression? We'll do that when we come back. You're listening to the best in paranormal podcasting. This is Darkness Radio. Welcome back to the best in paranormal podcasting. This is Darkness Radio. I'm Tim Dennis. Our guest is Linda Yell Schiller. We are talking about PTS dreams, transforming your nightmares from trauma through healing dream work. And uh, we are starting to get into the dream work, uh, but I wanted to kind of establish a baseline here before we get into that dream work. Uh, so I was asking Linda before the break, when you have somebody who needs to take that first step. And Linda was starting to get into that. But when you have somebody who doesn't want to get through grief, um, depression, and trauma, if they, if they see everything as trauma and they, they can't see the forest for the trees, when they can't take that first step, when they don't want to accept the fact that there is light in the world, when they don't want to, ex, ex, you know, um, I guess when they don't want to see the fact that there is good in the world, that there's happiness in their life when they, they know that. Um, I'm okay. I'm okay. You're good. Okay. Um, when they, when they know that um, there is, uh, there's, there's something to their life that is good. How do you push them forward to see that good and, and begin the, the process of healing? It's a really, really good question. And um, first I would, if someone is in this sort of stuck and, and, and down a place, I, I would want to refer them to a really good therapist or have them connect. And I don't know if this, this friend of yours is doing any um, healing work of, of their own right now, but sometimes it's, bigger than what someone can do themselves or even with all the best well-meaning friends and family it, it does take professional help sometimes mm -hmm. so i, I want to make sure to say this is you know not something you necessarily like try at home right um and to continue though when someone is sort of mired in that uh in that darkness they have developed what we might call a victim mentality mm -hmm. where their identity has become in, wrapped up and caught up with the terrible things that they might have experienced or have happened to them. And somehow then, because, because you said that they don't want to get past it. And I think that's actually the first step and no one else can do that for someone. Mm -hmm. So even if they can't, see, accept, or acknowledge that there is light in the world, as you put it, or there are good things in the world or in their life. If they don't want to look at it, we can't make someone do that, right? Like you can lead a horse to water, but right. you can't make them drink. Yeah. So they need to come to a decision that they'd like their life to be different than it is before it can be, right? Because you've heard this, the, the phrase maybe, um, energy flows where attention goes. Yeah. So if all their attention is going to the dark and the pain and the suffering, there's no energy going to the possibilities of hope or resilience or healing. So the first step then is to get to a place where someone says, I would like for things to be different. And part of why that can be so challenging, because as I said before, if this pain and suffering has become part of their identity, 
it's really scary to give it up. Who will I be Mm -hmm. if I'm not identified with this trauma? And I have had clients who have been in that stuck place. Um, So the work is, first of all, to help them recognize, and this is where the cycle spiritual, for me and my work and my dream work, the cycle spiritual element comes in, is can they imagine, can they acknowledge, can they accept that somewhere, somehow, there is a spark of the divine in them, no matter what has happened in their life, and that that spark is connected with other people and with the healing energy of the universe. So it may or may not be the, I say the G word, right? Some, you know, whether it's God or not, yeah. the universe, the force, the energy, whatever, you know, we would call that. Can someone acknowledge that there's a potential possibility for them connecting with that both in themselves and outside themselves? That's, a, that's one place to start. And then if we take that into dream work, we do, some people can't even imagine it or can't even wrap their minds around it in their waking conscious life. It's just too much to, to grok, right? Too much to compute. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The dreams then become a potential backdoor into the healing realm. So with the guidance and help of someone who is familiar with dream work and can help them work with the dream, they can go back inside the nightmares that they have or the bad dreams that they have or the painful dreams that they have and begin to work in either both outside the dream or inside the dream with the characters and the images and the landscape and the energy Because we can kind of fool our conscious mind by saying, well, this isn't real, right? This isn't your life. This is your dream. So sometimes then the conscious mind is willing to accept the subconscious as sort of a separate reality and do the work over here, Mm -hmm. like on the side, so to speak. But we know that we are an integrated body-mind system and our, our conscious and our unconscious are intricately related, including through our our physiology and our body. So if we make a change in one aspect, we can then affect a change in another aspect. So by doing the healing work inside the dream, we begin to get resonance in the waking life. And and actually, in my book, I have a couple of examples of of how I've done that with people. You brought up an interesting scenario, and I want to throw this scenario at you too, Linda. Um, Our former governor here in Minnesota, who uh, (laughs) uh, Jesse Ventura, it had a, a line in Predator who said, I ain't got time to bleed. And uh, there's also another personality type that you just brought up is the person who wraps themselves in trauma, who's almost proud of it. The fact that they survived it, um, right. who makes it a part of their personality. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What do you say to the person who is proud of the fact that not only have they survived it, they think they've conquered it, but it turns out that that trauma is what's weighing them down from becoming more than what they ever thought they could be. Uh, Part of the healing process is to move from a victim stance to a survivor stance. So being proud of having survived difficult experiences is part of the healing journey. Ideally, however, it doesn't stop there because if you're still identifying yourself by making a a reference point of the terrible things that happen to you, then you're missing other opportunities in your life. So to work with someone around recognizing that there are additional options, they they don't have to let go of being proud of their survival skills. But part of the question is, are the skills that they learned in order to survive still really serving them today? Or have they become outdated or outmoded or no longer relevant for what's happening in their life right now. And so that's a process that people may or may not go through, sometimes with professional help, sometimes doing deep dream work um, with or without professional help. Are you still drawing too much negative energy to yourself if you keep calling that energy to yourself and pointing out the trauma over time that you've, you've survived? If you keep saying, well, you know what? I was a survivor of this. I was a survivor of that. Mm -hmm. Are you still drawing that negative energy to yourself if you keep calling upon it over the years? I think if nothing changes, then that would be true. If the, if it's static, if you reach a point where you say, I survived this and over and over and over again, that's the story 
right? There's another, uh, I, I learned this million years ago in my first job out of graduate school uh, from my consultant. She said, I am the story I tell myself I am. So the story you're telling yourself about yourself is who you become. So if you're telling yourself a story, I'm a survivor of trauma and look what I have overcome, that's great. But if that's your whole story, you're missing a lot of other opportunities for potential happiness in life. So really the story is I am what I want to be, not what I was. Yes. And that takes hard work and it's not easy. Because a lot of people identify themselves by what happened to them as opposed to who they are or who they could be. There's a, a word um, in Hebrew, which is kavana, and kavana means intention. Mm -hmm. So the word at its root, ki, kivun or lekaven, means to point yourself in a direction. So if I'm going east, my kivun is east. If I'm going north, my kivun is north, my direction. Mm -hmm. So we start with pointing ourselves in the direction we want to go into. Okay. Even if we're not there yet. But if we point ourselves in a different direction, then we have the possibility of getting there. But if we only point ourselves in the direction of our past and our trauma, that's where we'll keep going. Interesting. So let's say I'm, I am your trauma patient and I come to you and I say, Linda, I've been through a lot in my life. I've, I've had the, pardon my language, I've had the crap beat out of me. And uh, I need to figure out how I'm going to do this, but I want to, I want to get treated by you. And this is what I want to do. How do I start? If I want to do this through my dreams, how do I get into it? How do I, how do I start to reconcile myself and move through this trauma? Mm -hmm. What happens? Mm -hmm. So if we're doing dream work together, mm -hmm. the first thing I would suggest to you, first thing I would say is good for you because oh. you've already started, mm -hmm. Right. Pointing yourself in a direct, different direction. Yes. Saying, I'm tired of living my life feeling like there's danger around every corner. Mm -hmm. Or I'm going to be hurt every time I turn around. I, I, I want to have a different story. I don't want to live that way anymore. So, A, you've taken the enormous first step of pointing yourself in a new direction. So, you're already halfway there. So, then we turn to how do you do this healing work if we're doing dream work? I would tell you, first of all, buy a dream journal. Buy yourself a book to write down your dreams because we know dreams are like wisps of smoke. They're very ephemeral. You know, you sit up too fast, it's gone. If we don't anchor it down some way, we will forget many, if not most of our dreams. Cause we know that we dream, everyone dreams five to seven times, five to seven dreams every night mm -hmm. because that's our REM cycle. But few people remember five to seven dreams a night. And many people say, oh, I don't have any dreams at all. So the truth is they have dreams. They just don't remember dreams. So one of the best ways to remember it is you get a journal and you make a practice of recording your dreams. So that's number one. And then number two is you can have um, an orientation to call in healing dreams or to call in the kind of dreams that you want to heal or to work through or to reconcile whatever your issue or struggle is in life. And this is a process called dream incubation. Hmm. And dream incubation is an ancient, ancient uh, practice um, it goes back at least to ancient uh, Greek times, but way before that. But in Greece, they had the temples of Asclepius. And when a pilgrim would come to the te temple of Asclepius, they'd come for the specific purpose of having healing dreams to heal, whether it was a physical or an emotional um, injury or pain or trauma in their life. So they journey from all over the world and they'd come to this temple and they'd meet with the priests or priestesses there. And they would have some kind of a, a cleansing um, uh, initiation before going into the temple. And then they would sleep at night in the temple and have a dream. And the, the um, story is that the priest and priestesses would loose, let loose in the temple these little yellow snakes. And the snakes would slither around and whisper the dreams in your ear at night. Hmm. And then when you'd wake up in the morning, you would tell the guardians of the temple your dream and they would help you interpret and understand what it means. And that is the dream incubation from the temples of Asclepius. So we don't have to have snakes slithering around no. us anymore. No, no. There are many ways to have a healing dream so that the principle of 
preparing yourself and planning to get information through your sleep in your dreams is the same principle. So you can use that same dream journal and write down. You can spend five minutes. You can spend a half an hour. Write down what you want. I'd like a dream to help me heal X. Or I'd like a dream to help me figure out Y. Or I'd like a dream to help me let go of my attachment to Z. If you end your writing with a question, the more clear and specific you get the question, the higher the likelihood is that you understand your dream right away. And then when you wake up, whether it's in the middle of the night or in the morning, try to get the dream as soon as you can upon waking up um, and write it on the same page that you've written your question. And there will be a connection in the dream. You may have to do the work of peeling the layers of the dream in order to find the connection, but there'll be a message in there for you. Your job is then to find the, the gift in the dream. Interesting. You know, I always assumed that there was no control over what it was you dreamt, that it just kind of came to you. I, I'll give you an example, and I, I hate to cut you off. I'm sorry, Linda. We'll, we'll, we'll continue on here shortly. Um, and I'll, I'll give you an example. For years and years and years, and I can only, and I'm, I want your opinion on this. I can only assume what it is. I'll tell you what I assume it is, and then you weigh in with your professional opinion. And I bet it's going to be a lot different than what I think. As my body is breaking down, mm. um, I, I I also didn't tell you off air that 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 I have Charco foot. Which, if you ever want nightmare fuel for yourself one night, look up Charco foot. It's spelled C H A R C O T. It's very French and very very gruesome. Um, oh, so this is a like an illness process in your body. Yeah, it's a, it's a, either people with a diabetes or MS get it. It's oh. less than one percent of diabetics get it. Okay. Um, but essentially, your your ankle bones weaken from neuropathy if you're diabetic, and then your leg bone goes through your ankle and through your foot. If it manages to make it through the foot, through your skin, you lose your leg below your your knee. Yeah, but the pictures are on, on Google are real fun. If you love horror movies, it's a great thing. Um, <laughs> but uh, so, um, so as I'm having different parts of my body break down every single night, multiple times a night, I'm having these, and, and I had for years, I'm talking three to five years, maybe seven years. Every time I close my eyes, I'm having dreams that I'm just, again, I apologize for my language. I'm getting the piss pounded out of me by whatever it is in my dream. I could be having a fight with an alien. I could be having a fight with, you know, I could be in a boxing ring and just be getting decimated by my opponent. I could be having a dream where I'm in a wrestling ring and I'm getting killed by three guys in a ring at one time. Mm -hmm. I could be out in the middle of a street and I could be getting pistol whipped by somebody. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just every single dream I have, somebody's mm -hmm. jumping me and beating the crap out of me. Right. And right. it's every single night and it's multiple scenarios. Like you said, five to seven times a night we dream. Every five scenarios, each scenario is I'm just getting beat and beat and beat. And I wake up and I'm exhausted. Oh, yeah, I bet. And I'm like, well, when's this going to end? Right. It just didn't end. And and so I thought, well, <laughs> here we go. I'm going to go to sleep. And, you know, and, and I, I just didn't know when it was going to stop. Finally, one day it stops. I just don't know why. Huh. But it stopped. And yeah. I have chaotic dreams, but I don't remember them. I don't know what the chaos is, but I don't, I don't remember what it is. Um, and a lot of times I don't remember what I dream now, but I just know there's some chaos there. But I, I, I can't remember. I don't know what it is. Um, so in your professional opinion, is it just the coinciding of my body breaking down in my psyche trying to deal with it? So, um, first of all, Tim, I'm so sorry that you're struggling with this and you have this physical pain. And I'm so sorry that you also have had the nightmares. To, to be able to answer your question, can I ask you a few questions? Absolutely. Okay. So, when did you have the nightmares and when did they stop? 
Oh, uh, let's see here. Um, I'd say they started. I can't think of what year they started. So approximately how many years ago or approximately how old were you or approximately what year? It doesn't matter exactly. I'd say approximately maybe 12 to 15 years ago. And they, that's when they started. Yeah. And then they okay. ended. So they probably ended maybe it was recently, maybe two to three years ago. Okay. Yeah. When they began, mm -hmm. had you already been experiencing the, um, I don't know if I'm going to the pronounce shark, it. The charcoal foot? The charcoal foot? Yeah. I've, I've been in full blown. Uh, even even complications with charcoal foot. I've been in full blown complications. Mm. Um, I've had charcoal foot for about eight to nine years, and I've been in full blown complications for uh, six years, five six years. So you have had this charcoal foot for like eight to nine years, mm -hmm. but the dreams began twelve to fifteen years ago. Yeah. Were you experiencing symptoms before you were diagnosed? Uh, in the foot itself? No. Well, wherever the symptoms would have been, before you, before you were diagnosed, there must have been some physical oh, I was, symptoms. Oh, I was having issues with my neck and back back then, too. And, and I mean, the neck and back were degrading, and, and, you know, I was having physical issues there, too. Okay. Yeah. So what it sounds like to me is you had what we call prodromal dreams. And prodromal dreams are predictive dreams specifically connected to physical ailments or illness. So you started to get these dreams of getting, as you said, the shit beat out of you <laughs> um, for, you know, five to seven, five to eight years before your diagnosis. You're already feeling some pain and some breaking down in your body. So I think your dreams were alerting you. They were a medic alert hmm. in the beginning saying something's wrong. Something's not okay. Because when we have dream repetitive dreams, those, those repetitive nightmares, that is a clear SOS from our unconscious. Something's going on that we're not attending to or addressing or doing the right thing to, to figure out so we can heal. Okay. So I think in the beginning, the dreams were giving you a medic alert that something is going on because you're getting the shit, the, you know, the, 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 you know, getting pounded out as you said, getting beat up over and over in your dreams. I imagine your body was already experiencing yeah. feeling like it got beat up. Oh, yeah. You just didn't yeah. know why. Yeah. So the dreams were a, were a metaphor, hmm. right? You weren't getting pistol whipped on the street, but if your neck was hurting and your back was hurting like the, the the core of your body mm -hmm. was in pain yeah and the dreams were saying in a way and this is sort of like you know monday morning quarterbacking mm -hmm. but the dreams were saying this is even worse than you think because hmm. in the dreams you were really getting pulverized and at that time you were having symptoms, but it wasn't as bad yet that until it led to the diagnosis, I, I, if I'm getting yeah. the time frame. Yeah. Yeah. So that's part A. Part B, they ended two to three years ago and switched. What have you been doing differently or what happened in your life that caused the switch? Because you did something differently so that you're not haunted by these same, you know, being, you know, beat up dreams anymore. Well, I have been taking better care of myself. I, I you know, I've, I've been seeing, I, I, I don't really talk about it on air anymore, but I, I, but I will, but I will. I, you, you know, whatever's comfortable, I, sure. this is your no, no, privacy. No. So, you know, no, taking but, uh, better care is, is enough if that's what you want to say. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know that I don't know that listeners know this, but uh, I go to the doctor weekly. <laughs> mm. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. We've been really struggling with this for a long time. I, I can I can see why hearing about PTS dreams, you know, would be something that resonated for you. So you did something better for yourself, whatever, and probably more than one thing, somewhere around two to three years ago. And whatever you've been doing, whether it's doctor's visits or medication or acupuncture or herbs or THC and CBD or D all of the above or, or prayer, whatever you've been doing. Oh yeah. Yep. Has helped. Yep. Just, it's a combination of things. It's, it's a combination of diet, of doctor's visits, of yeah. um, just trying to all around better take care of myself. Cause you know, I, I know that, uh, you know, that, that uh, it's a slippery slope if I don't, you know, so your whether or not you can reverse or or stop the course of the disease, you certainly arrested it at least as far as your dreaming unconscious knows. Because mm -hmm. you're not having nightmares anymore. Now there's more work to do, right? Because there's still chaos in your dreams. Yeah, and right? we don't have the time to, to right, go right, into exactly. the details. Yeah, and it's not about me either. So yeah. Well, it's a little bit about you because this is your show, <laughs> and you invited me on, so you you get to have like the front row seat, you know. Um, but for anyone, that's a sign that you're doing the right thing when your nightmares begin to shift into something not nightmares. When we see the pattern change, that's a sign that we're on the right track. That's a sign we're on the right track. When we see the pattern of the upsetting dreams shift into something that becomes less and less upsetting rather than more and more upsetting, then we know we're on the right track. And then our job is to figure out as best as we can, what are we doing right <laughs> that yeah. works yep. and continue to do that. And then what else? is our system calling for to get even more grounded and even more solid and even more peaceful and free as much as possible of pain and distress. Yeah. You know, it, it, uh, I guess that's the key, you know, it, it's, it's hard to, I, I mean, I know, or, you know, it, you hear, I think a lot of people push off body, mind, spirit because they go, well, you know, my body's just fine. I can't, I can't imagine my mind and spirit are connected to my body, but until you go through it, you, you have no idea how much everything is connected. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And really we is. know for a fact that there are many, many illnesses that are, they're called psychosomatic, but mm -hmm. that doesn't mean they're not real. They simply mean that the stress and the um, upset that we've experienced in our life is affecting our bodies. True. Very Asthma, true. digestive disorders, certain heart conditions, um, skin disorders. We know from a, for a fact stress and, and tra trauma affect us physiologically. So when we can reduce the stress and trauma in our life in a variety of different ways, our physical symptoms abate. Just one example, right? IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. Yeah. There's no medical basis when that's the diagnosis. But what the docs say is in addition to changing your diet and paying good attention to your, for your physical health care, they say, do meditation, reduce your stress, change your job, you know, have, you know, do uh, enjoyable activities in your life. And the more you can do that, the better you're going to feel. <laughs> true very true and, and you're absolutely right about that um so with that being said uh and and i i think we've i i know we haven't covered the entire deal with dealing with trauma and in using uh dreams to heal you through that I, again the book is there pts dreams transform okay. your nightmares from trauma through healing dream work and we encourage people to go out and get that book i do why i have you here want to talk about uh decoding your soul's wisdom and yeah. and talk about what is there in in the the partis method for focusing mm -hmm. on multiple layers um right. of meaning so that you you can entangle complex 
or confusing dreams. I know that there's dreams out there that we have these dreams and we go, what what was that about? Uh, What exactly does that mean? What, you know, we have these dreams that, that maybe we assign meaning to them when, when maybe we shouldn't. And maybe there's something deeper there that we really should be listening to. Um, are our dreams really harbingers of, of things we should be listening to? Are we receiving messages through our dreams that, that um, are telling us more about ourselves? Can you explain to us, first of all, what, what the Pardes method is? Sure. So the Pardes method, the word Pardes is, again, because I'm a student of Kabbalah and I, uh, I, a lot of my dream work has some sources there, some of the languaging. So Pardes in, has several layers of meaning. And what it is, in, literally, it's an orchard. Okay. So in Hebrew, the word Pardes means orchard. It's used as an analogy for the Garden of Eden. So those are two layers of meaning right there. And then when we study a whole, the holy books um, in Judaism, the Torah, the way to get to the deepest layer is called the Pardes method. And each of the letters, the P, the R, the D, and the S, um, are the first letter of a Hebrew word that gives us the ever deepening layers of inquiry. Mm-hmm. So the P is the surface layer of our dream. And P stands for pshat, which in English means the simple layer. So the first layer of our dream is the dream itself. Okay. It's the characters, it's the story, it's the images, is what we dreamt. That's the simple layer. And sometimes we have a lovely dream. We wake up or we have a fun dream or we have a sexy dream. We wake up and we go, I don't want to touch this. I just had a great time. That's <laughs> plenty for me, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's layer one. Layer two, the R is the first letter of the word remez, and remez means hint or hinted at. So the second layer is the hints that we first get our first associations. We had this dream and it's like, oh yeah, I I dreamt about pizza because I had pizza last night. Oh yeah, that's the connection. And actually there was too much pepperoni and I kind of had indigestion. So maybe I shouldn't eat pizza right before bed anymore. Not a super deep and complicated layer, but it wasn't in the dream itself. In the dream, there was just a big pizza pie and that's it. Mm -hmm. But you made some associations after waking up to, oh, maybe this means this. So that's the second layer. Third layer is the D for drash, which comes from the word lidrosh, which means to chase after or pursue. Okay. So this is the layer of doing the dream work. So there's many, many methods, and I cover them in mo- both modern dream work and PTS dream. Many, many ways to work with a dream. There's the gestalt method where every character and every object in the dream is some aspect of yourself. There is a Jungian style of working. There is dialoguing with dream characters. There's working inside of the dream. There's working outside of the dream. There's many, many ways you can work with the dream. So in this layer, we work with the dream. We kind of really, you know, call it out on the carpet and we use a lot of different methods to say, okay, past that simple association, what else is there? What else does this remind me of? Is it something not just from yesterday, but from a few months ago or a few years ago or something from my whole family system or my holding family energy from a family legacy burden that I need to work out? So there's that whole layer. Okay. And then the final layer of the S is stands for sod or secret. So this final layer is the transpersonal, the spiritual, the mystical, and the layer that might have meaning not just for you personally, but also meaning for others in the world. Hmm. Because we can dream for ourselves and we can dream for others and dream for the world. So in this layer, we might find meaning um, at that mystical or transpersonal layer as well. Interesting. Okay. So... With wow, you've you've just unpacked a lot there. Uh, that that's that's a lot to to take in. So it, it is. We we covered a lot of territory in a short amount of time. We we have covered a lot of territory. Let me ask you just real quick, then, uh, Linda. With so sometimes that that little bit of a roll in the hay in in that in that dream is, is it could be more than just a little bit of a roll in the hay in that dream. Absolutely depending on who, who you're rolling in the hay with <laughs> and um, what you're feeling, right? If, if you're going to take one thing from 
dream work to pay attention to is Mm -hmm. what's there's two narratives. There's the storyline and there's the feeling narrative. Okay. Pay attention to the feeling narrative and that's going to lead you. That's the road home to the meaning. How do you feel in the beginning of the dream, in the middle of the dream, at the end of the dream? And when you wake up, that'll give you an indication of where the dream is connected for you in your life. If it's okay. So if it's somebody that's totally, if it just throws you off guard, like you're, I never, ever thought of ever having a roll in the hay with that person ever in my <laughs> life, but it just so happens that it was that person. Right. What does that tell you in your dream? Well, so then you go into symbol and metaphor. Okay. Then you say, all right, who is this person? What's my relationship to them? Mm-hmm. Is this someone who is taboo, like uh, a relative? Or is this my my best friend's girlfriend or boyfriend? And if so, what does that mean about them and your relationship with the friend? Or is this a movie star or a, a political figure? And then let's say I, in the book, there's one example I'm thinking of. Let's say you had a dream where you are having a lovely roll of the hay with Madonna. Okay, right? sure. Who's Madonna, right? So then I would say, well, who's Madonna to you? And you would mm-hmm. tell me, uh, when I think of Madonna, I think of this, right? I, so who do you think of when you think of Madonna, just for example? Uh, when I think of Madonna, I think of uh, I think of early Madonna. So I'll think of uh, the like a virgin Madonna. Okay. Okay. So it'd be a little bit of taboo, a little bit of uh, cutting edge, a little bit of uh, kind of uh, you know playing with society a little bit, but uh, a little risky. Put it that way. Okay. Yeah. So you have a number of different associations Mm -hmm. one is a spiritual figure a Mm -hmm. a virgin who is the mother of jesus christ that's the original madonna Mm -hmm. and then we have the the pop singer madonna who is kind of on the edge and she's kind of risque and she's very sort of sexual energy about her yeah and then we get to play with the word itself Madonna. Is there any any play on words? Do you know someone named Don, for example? <laughs> um, sometimes it's a play on words like that. Okay. But we, we go through all the possible meanings, and then I ask you, which one resonates with you? Because I'm not here, right? I don't interpret your dream, right. but I help you figure out where the resonance is from any possible number of of associations so you might say well i'm thinking about the virgin mary here and someone else saying i'm thinking about the rock star so those Mm. are two very different dreams yeah they are yeah (laughs) yeah that's interesting that's very interesting indeed so let me ask you this okay so we've gone through dream visitations we've gone through past lives we've gone through rock star (laughs) sex (laughs) dreams um but in all that can we have and now this is this is the other one that the last one I do want to go through uh, a dream with the divine mm-hmm. so a dream with spirit guides a dream with uh, I want to even go so far as angels or even a dream with the creator themselves mm-hmm. do you believe that we can resonate on a different level in our dreams and possibly go between uh I don't want to say go between worlds, but maybe even go between worlds yeah. um, and actually get to that level where we could maybe even have that visit with someone we're not supposed to have that visit with yet. Uh, well, you know, I don't see why we're not supposed to have that visit, right? Because depending on your or the listener's orientation, what's the soul anyway? What's the spirit anyway? Mm -hmm. Is it that spark of the divine within all of us that enlivens us? Mm -hmm. What's the difference between being alive and dead? Some spiritual traditions would say it's because we contain the spark of the divine of eternal life within us, right? Whether or not you believe in reincarnation. And there are many manifestations of how do we connect with powers larger than ourself. And this is part of healing from pretty much anything that we struggle with. How do we connect with resources that are bigger than us, that are more healing energy from? So people do have connections with angels or with spirit guides or with totem animals or with some um, spiritual or mystical figure from their particular religious tradition. 
So at one level, there's a metaphor there. But on the other level, who who are we to say, I think that that's not an encounter with a healing holy force, right? I, I don't question it, right? Me and Einstein were on the same page. Einstein was a big believer in God, just saying, yeah. um, right? So if one of the premier um, scientists of our generation says, yeah, there are powers out there that we don't understand, and there's some divine um, force that is um, helping me think about, you know, the physics of the world, who am I to, you know, challenge that? <laughs> That's true. That's true. And actually, that's a good a good place to, to leave it, I guess, Linda. Uh, I've really enjoyed our conversation today, Linda. I really have. Uh, the the two books that are out there, folks, that you want to order and uh, that we have a link in the description of this program to, PTS Dreams, Transfer Your Nightmares from Trauma Through Healing Dreamwork, uh, the other book, Modern Dreamwork, New Tools for Decoding Your Soul's Wisdom. Folks, we don't have enough time in a program to be able to cover the uh, the the material that we want to cover, uh, but by all means, they're in the books there. Uh, Linda, you're also you also have a website. Should we give people the website too? Sure. Um, each book has its own website. So there's ptsdreams.com and there's moderndreamwork.com. And then my personal website is lindayalschiller.com. All right. And uh, we'll have that up on the website as well, or the website, the description of the show, you know, the, the same thing, right? Same difference. <laughs> uh, the description of the show, we'll put that up as well so you can access those websites. Um, and uh, you take appointments too as well? I do. Right now, I am doing dream work with people. I'm not mm -hmm. taking on new clients because I'm super busy right now, mm -hmm. but I'm doing, I do a lot of teaching. I train. Um, I'm a member of a wonderful organization called IASD, which is the International Association for the Study of Dreams. We have a big conference coming up in July. Okay. Um, and so what I'm doing now is really focusing more on the dream work element of my practice. All right. Well, we'll point people your way for dream work. And uh, again, folks, check out the two books. And uh, and again, it's fascinating stuff. I'm, I'm always fascinated by what we can learn through our dreams and mm. and that that portal, if you will, that that exists within our mind that we can we can uh, really learn more about ourselves. Linda, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. Bye pleasure thank you for your really great questions and observations and as i say in one or both of the books may your dreams bring you home to your highest and best self oh thank you so much linda folks i want to thank you so much too for joining us for another great week of darkness radio uh it's it's been a great week and we've had a, a great week of shows uh join us again next week here on darkness radio uh we're gonna have the ghost brothers on next week i can tease that much for you uh, we've got the Ghost Brothers on. We're going to talk Fright Club on Discovery+. Plus. Uh, and we've got some other surprises for you next week as well as we roll into the uh, Independence Day week. So, uh, again, take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Uh, the world, for some reason, has turned to kind of a colder, darker place. We don't want that to happen. We want you to go out there and help somebody this week. Uh, if you see somebody in need, take an extra minute. Help your fellow man or woman. Uh, get out there and uh, just do a little something extra for each other. If you do that, it makes the world a little bit better place. And uh, we've always got an extra minute or an extra uh, hand for somebody out there. And by all means, we can do it. We can do it. We can turn this thing around and uh, we can we can be there for each other. If we do that, we'll make the world a better place. You know, if you don't do it for yourself, do it for your buddy, Timmy. That's, that's, uh, that's all. Uh, I know I'll do something extra for somebody this weekend as well. So we'll see you next week right here on the best in paranormal podcasting. This has been Darkness Radio.